shall not remain the same. This is prophetic. I will not remain the same. In the name of Jesus. Turn it to prayer wherever you are. I will not remain the same in my spiritual work. I will not be the same again. I will be translated from one degree of glory to another degree of glory. Oh, thank you, Lord. I will not remain the same in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, we thank you for your word sent to us today. Lord, we receive with thanksgiving. We will not remain the same. And that's our prophetic word for this season. We thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Somebody shout a believing amen. All right, good morning, church. Go to two, three people and welcome them to the house of the Lord today. Good morning, good morning. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Amen. The Bible says wherever the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Praise the name of the Lord. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, His name shall forever be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. As you take your seat, I bring greetings from our church in Nigeria. Amen. I bring you the greetings of peace. Hallelujah. Amen. We went to the convention of peace and we brought peace back to you. Oh, come on. It seems as if you don't want it. Come on, if you don't want it, I'll keep it. But if you want it, I want you to receive it. Hallelujah. We bring you greetings from the convention of peace. And we bring peace to you and yours. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. We bring you the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. The peace of God that trumps every storm. Of life, the peace of God that is above whatever the enemy is throwing at you. Are you hearing me, child of God? When the peace of God sits over your life, it will outrun every plot and plans of the enemies. That's a good place to say, Amen. Amen. All right, you can see some of us wearing these colors. It may not go around, but just you know, for those who have it. Put it on. Amen. This is the color of our church. Amen. Come on, praise God. And this is done in the Nigerian Western way. Hallelujah. There is a way uh, people from the Western part of Nigeria make their, their clothes. They manufacture those clothes. So these were made, they were woven by hands. Amen. Come on, amen. Amen. All right, for those who are from that part of the world, they understand what I'm talking about. It's woven by, by the hands. It takes them number of days, number of weeks to make this happen. And this was, uh, this was uh, presented by the Children Evangelism Unit, right? The children ham of the church. The first night, they were the one who took over most part of what happened the first night of the international convention. So I said, oh, I need to bring some things back for my people. And um, I, I, I asked for more, but they didn't, ask, they didn't have more. I was only able to get 31 pieces of uh, this. Amen. So next time, if they still have it, I promise to get for, you know, all of us. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. But it was a great, 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 great convention. It was a convention of peace. And um, we brought peace back to you. No matter what the circumstance is in your life, 
I speak the peace of God to that situation in the name of our Lord Jesus. Come on, shout a better amen. amen. All right. Uh, uh, I'm going to go into what God has for us momentarily, uh, but I just uh, wanted to, you know, say a few things here and there. During our national convention in America, a pastor here, Pastor Pius Ojo, uh, was elevated uh, to the position of a senior pastor in government, as it were. Amen. <laughs> By the ordination, amen. All right. We didn't recognize him, uh, you know, when we got back, but the Holy Spirit, you know, checked my heart. Come on, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. It's a great thing. Amen. 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 All right, we celebrate you, we thank God for you, we thank God for this grace, amen. All right, it's not everybody that gets ordained as a pastor in the Gospel Faith Mission International. It's a big deal. As a matter of fact, you, you must have served at least for eight to ten years before you are ordained as a pastor. All right? Ordained pastors are senior pastors. As a matter of fact, in government, you can't give communion if you are not an ordained pastor. You can't bury people if you are not an ordained pastor. You can't christen or dedicate children if you are not an ordained pastor. The list goes on and on. You can't even serve communion if you are not an ordained pastor. So it's a big deal. They watch you over the years to make sure that you qualify. So for a pastor to have qualified, it's a big deal. Can we thank God for him one more time? Congratulations, sir. Amen. Amen and amen. So we, we thank God. We give God the praise. And I bring greetings from our general overseer, our father in the Lord, in person of Pastor Dr. Elijah Ludele Abino, who is praying and praying for all of us. It brings the greetings of peace to every one of us in Jesus' precious name. Somebody shout a bigger and a louder amen. amen. And also I want to thank God for all our ministers who held, uh, who held, you know, the church, uh, who kept the church going. I don't want to have the miss quoted or misinterpreted, who held the church going while we were away. Can we thank God for our dear Deacon Olabos in the amen. Come on, come on, come on, those great teachings. Thank you so much, sir. All right, Deacon Joseph Onongo, can we thank God for him, amen. All right, our daddy, our daddy, Pastor Taiwa Jadi, come on, can we thank God for him. Our dear Deacon Victor Dua, uh, all our Deaconesses. Oh, come on. How about Deacon David? Okay, my God, those powerful teachings. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing what you did while we were away. You know, when you have people taking care of business, then you don't have to worry. At some places, you leave those places. By the time you get back, the the whole thing is on fire. <laughs> you have to start, you know, trying to, to quench fires. But these folks brought us joy. They brought us happiness. As a matter of fact, the work has even gone better. Say better. Come on, let's thank God and, and thank God for these great people. We appreciate you, all right? We don't take such things for granted. And while we were away, you showed up too, amen. Come on, thank God for you. Thank God for you. Why were we? You, you, you showed up. You participated. You gave. You didn't say, oh, the pastors are not here. Come on. I'm not giving again. You gave. You kept the house going on. That's what a family of God ought to be. Amen. All right? Even when I'm here, when I'm not here, let the work continue. Say better amen. amen. As a matter of fact, when, the, when I'm not here, you should even do better. 
You remember Jesus was saying, it's expedient that I go away. If I don't go away, the comforter will not, will not come. The Holy Spirit will not come. It's my joy, you know, when I leave to see that all of you get into your God-given assignment. Amen. All right? If I have people that are consistent and faithful and which God is growing and developing in this house, then I can take more assignment out there. All right? Remember, a former national overseer at the age of foreign missions told you about the apostolic walk. I had a stopover in London. I'm sure the folks in London, you know, would have wanted me to stay at least maybe for a week with them, but because I had to come back. Even in Nigeria, there were some of my friends who fought me for not coming there. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I need to say this to you. Uh, one of the apostles that came here last year, they prepared a whole mansion for me, thinking I was going to stay overnight and preach for them. I said, no, I have to return back to America. My people are calling me. I have to return back to my people. Praise God. I mean... I know you didn't like it, but <laughs> you got to do what you got to, what you got to do. But I said all of that to say this, that the more we honor these people and we receive their ministry, uh, the better it is for some, someone like me to, you know, to do more for God on the outside or, you know, externally out there. Amen. How do you understand what I'm talking about? All right. The more you, you give them that Open heart. Open your heart to their ministries. Open your heart to what God is saying through them. The more, you know, you will benefit from the grace of God that is upon their, their lives. Amen. Somebody shout amen. Looking at my itinerary this year, I'm telling you, just, you all just pray for me some more. Amen. All right. I think this month I have to go to Texas, Dallas. Uh, next month I have to be in Maryland, London. <laughs> pray more for me, amen. Uh, pray more for me, amen. Or maybe stretch your hands towards me now and just pray for me, amen. And all the ministers, using me as a point of contact to all the ministers. All right, pray, you know, pray for us. Brethren, pray for us. We need your prayers to be able to effectively do what God wants us to do. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Somebody shout amen. amen. See, I'm not one of those pastors who would say I, I have everything covered. You pray for me. As I pray for you, you pray for for me, that's the way the kingdom of God is set up. No one should have the arrival uh, mentality. Amen. There are some things you may, not, you may not know. God may raise somebody else who will cover that blind spot in your life. And that's the reason as a child of God, don't present yourself or don't Package yourself in such a way that you don't need help. Okay? There are some folks when you, oh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good, but they are not good. When you are not good, say you are not, you are not good. So that the grace of God can be released towards you. The Bible says that God looks at the proud from afar off. A proud person will always say, I have it all figured out. Even the Son of God, on his way to the cross, needed some reinforcement. That was the reason he told his disciples to watch with him for an hour. Are you still here today? Oh, come on. <laughs> Did I lose somebody this morning? He told his disciples to watch with him for, for an hour. Your business is not going well. Things are not working well in your family. Come on, that's the reason God has raised other folks in the kingdom. 
The Bible says one will chase a thousand, two will put ten thousand to flight. And when someone comes to you, that's not the time to broadcast whatsoever they have told you. As a child of God, you must maintain confidentiality. Say amen, somebody. I'm not your enemy. You are not my enemy. Our enemy is Satan. Our arch enemy is Satan. And that's the reason we must come together. The Bible says in Acts, they were in one accord. Are you hearing me, child of God? When we are united, when we come together, we can defeat the enemies. Amen. The enemy fears a united church. If a church is not united, the enemy has no, no regard for such a church. God is calling us to, to unity. So let's unite together. Amen. Let's unite behind the leadership. Whether I'm here or I'm not here, unite be. Time the leadership. When they say, let us jump, the next question should be, how high? Let us go. How far? Amen and amen. Say better amen. Because we have to build a healthy church. Build a healthy, healthy church. Somebody say amen. All right. So that brings me to what God asked for us today. I woke up with this yesterday morning, and I believe that it is a word from the Lord. And the title is The Church Pillars. God wants you and I to be a pillar in his house. We will get into it, and I know that God will bless you in Jesus' name. Turn your Bibles with me, if you would, to Galatians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. Galatians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me. And I went up by revelation and communicated to them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. Verse 3, yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage to whom we did not yield submission even for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with, with you. Verse 6, but from those who seemed to be something, whatever they were, it makes no difference to me. God shows personal favoritism to no man. For those who seemed to be something added nothing to me. But on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me as the gospel for the circumcised was to, to Peter. Verse 8 for he who walked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also walked effectively in me towards the Gentiles. Verse 9. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, pay attention to that, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. They desired only that we should remember the poor, the very thing which I also was eager 
eager to, to do. Somebody say amen. I, I don't want to go to the background of this, but this, uh, the whole book of uh, Galatians was Paul trying to correct a few things. All right? The Jewish nation were trying to subject the Gentile nation to some of the laws that they were used to by their, by their traditions. But God raised Apostle Paul to correct some of these, some of these uh, things that were going on. But what I want to major on today is James, Cephas, and John, who were the pillars of the church. James was the half-brother of, of Jesus. Amen. And then you have Peter, and then you have John. These were people who held the church, who God used to hold the church. Amen. So let me give you the definition of the word pillar. Somebody say pillar. All right. The word pillar in the Hebrew, it's pronounced or it is called Matzva, Matz, Matziva, or Matziva. And it is derived from a root meaning, uh, which means to stand. All right? The word in Hebrew is Matziva. And the root meaning is to, to stand. So what is God saying to us today? God is saying to you and I, he wants us to stand. Just as James, Cephas, and John stood for the first century church, he wants us to, to stand. Paul was writing about these three apostles that they were, they were pillars. Doctrinally, they were, they were sound. God doesn't just want us to just be bench warmers or members of a local assembly without standing. Look at somebody and say, he wants you to stand. He wants you to be a pillar. All right? And if you look at the word pillar, the opposite of the word pillar in this context is the word I call caterpillar, right? You are either a pillar or a caterpillar. And I'm praying that none of us will be a caterpillar in Jesus' name, all right? A caterpillar is a consumer. A caterpillar is a, a destroyer. All right? Even looking at, you know, uh, caterpillars out there, what they do most times, <laughs> uh, they demolish things. They break things apart. The word caterpillar, as used in the Old Testament from 1 Kings 8.37, means to be a consumer. All right? It means to devour, to consume. All right? And also, if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 38, you'll see the word locust. Even in Joel chapter 2, the Bible talks about the great army of God, the locust that was sent among Israel so that they can return, return to God. God does not want us to be caterpillars. He doesn't just want us to people who devour. He doesn't just want us to be people who destroy. He wants us to be people who build. Somebody say, I am a builder. I'm not a destroyer. <laughs> Amen. All right. So the word pillar also means to be a support. To be a support system. Pillars can be used to support buildings. If you look into this room very well, you will see two major pillars. Without these two poles, these 
building may not be able to stand. If you remove these two poles or two pillars from this auditorium, it's going to be disastrous. So also in the kingdom of God, God wants you and I to be pillars, people that can bear the weight, all right? These are, they, they call them load-bearing load pillars. They bear the load of, these, of this building. Without these pillars, everything will, cannot, cannot flow, cannot function well in this in this room. So a pillar is a support. God is calling you and I to support what he is doing in this house. So a pillar can be in form of support. Uh, pillars support buildings. Amen. If you look at Judges chapter 16, 26 and verse 29, the Bible talks about Samson, when Samson was nearing the end of his life, the Bible says that where there were two pillars in the auditorium or in the hall of the Philistines. And he spoke to someone, can you take me to those two pillars? And the Bible says that he grabbed those two pillars and, you know, shook those two pillars down, and the people Samson killed at death were more than those he killed when he was alive. I remember a, 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 a preacher said something about this. He said the reason the, the old Philistines died was because their building was built just around two pillars. And he gave a word of wisdom. He said, you don't build, you don't just build around two people. You don't just build around a few people. As a leader, you must be able to build around many people so that when one is not available, the other one will be available. Somebody say amen. All right? I got this teaching about 20-something years ago. And he stuck with me. Even as a leader in your department, as a leader, you must be able to duplicate yourself. Don't just build around few people. Build around multiple, multiple people. Somebody say amen. So when the two pillars were gone, the whole Philistine, the whole quality, the quality people, in, in, you know, in Philistia, they all died. The lords of the Philistines, the noble men and all the great men of Philistine, they all died because their building was only built around two pillars. Or the most support of the building was just on those two, on those two pillars. Hallelujah. How did we get there? Pillars can also represent something that is strong, something that is unbendable, okay? God wants to raise people that are unbendable, all right? Unbreakable, permanent. When you talk about pillar, you're talking about something that is strong, something that is unbendable. I mean, you know, in the context of what we are talking about, Something unbreakable, something that is permanent, such as a well-built foundation or a strong column that holds up a roof. And it tells me about people that are not tossed around with every wind of doctrine. You know, there are people, once they hear another thing, it changes the way or their dealings with God. But God wants us in this house to be people that are strong. Amen. People that are doctrinally sound. We know what we believe. Amen. So somebody doesn't just come 
and just, you know, say a few things and then we, 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 we lose control. I heard the story of a prophet who went to a congregation and before you know it, the prophet began to say all kinds of stuff. And this woman that was married, happily married, do you know that this woman left her husband to go be with this prophet? What can somebody tell you as a believer that will make you do such a thing? God is bringing this word because in the last days, there will be all kinds of prophets, people coming up in the name of the Lord. People that will be saying some things that are not biblically founded, doctrinally sound, you know, doc, things that are not doctrinally correct, things that are not doctrinally sound. But you must be a pillar. You must be someone who knows the Lord for yourself. Say amen. amen. So a pillar is someone who is, who is strong. It takes strength to be strong. Okay? In people, a pillar can be described in the Bible as documented in Psalm 144 and verse 12. In the church, a pillar is someone who is humble. Okay? A pillar in people is someone who is faithful. When God talks about a pillar in human terms, it means somebody who is humble, somebody who is faithful, someone who perseveres in trials. That's who a pillar is. Because if you read through the book of Acts, the church went through all kinds of trials. But these men, these apostles, these disciples, they stood their, their ground. So as a pillar in the house of God, there are things that will come at you that will shake your faith. But your faith must be unshakable. Look at somebody and say, your faith must be unshakable. Look at somebody again. Your faith must be unshakable. All right. You're trusting God for something. Sometimes God may not come true at the point you need him to come true. But you must stay the course. You must stay in the fight. You can afford to do it your own way. The Bible says, wait on the Lord and be of, of a good courage. I say, wait on the Lord. After you've done all to stand, stand ye therefore. God wants you to be a, a pillar. Say amen, somebody. So in human terms, a pillar is someone who is humble, faithful, who perseveres in trials and supports and defends the truth. Somebody who supports and defends the truth. Not that another doctrine comes up and then you are easily swayed away. No, you know what you believe. I am persuaded. This is what the word of God says. And I am standing with God and his word. Say amen, somebody. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. The Bible says, if I'm delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the foundation of the truth. Paul was writing to Timothy that the church of God is the pillar and the foundation of truth. That's the way God designed the church to be. But today we see a whole lot of churches today that are not representing what God intended the church to be. But we thank God for government 
that is a pillar of truth. Amen. Glory to God. Look at Revelation chapter 3 and verse 12. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my, of my God. So God raises men as, as pillars. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God. The new Jerusalem which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Revelation chapter 3 verse 2. So let me share a few things with you that will help you to be a pillar in the house of God. Amen. How many of us want to be pillars in the house of God? I may not finish this today. I, I will continue the next time. Number one, to be a church pillar. Church pillars are church members who attend faithfully. Okay? Can you help me preach to someone? A pillar in the house of God. Are you still here? A pillar in the house of God is someone who attends Faithfully. Say it again. A pillar in the house of God is someone who attends faithfully. All right. I came across this story. Let's read it together. A man rolled over in bed on Sunday morning and lamented to his wife. I don't want to go to church today. The wife responded, why would you not want to go to church today, dear? He sleep, sleepily said, because the music is too loud, the building is too cold, the people are not too friendly, and the preaching is too boring. The wife said, but it's important for you to attend. You have to go, honey. The man cutly said, just give me one good reason I should go. She gently reminded him, because you are the pastor. We went through that story to tell us that sometimes you may not feel like, if I go by my feeling this morning, I won't be here this morning, all right? Because, you know, I felt because of the travel and the dust and all of that, you know, my body, I felt a little weakness in my body, but I am strong in him, amen. So I don't, I don't, I don't show up here based on my feelings. I show up here because I have an assignment to fulfill. Somebody say amen. We all need the church, and the church needs us. And this is called the ministry of presence. To be a pillar in the house of God, you need to understand the ministry of, of presence. It is important that we, we show up. It is important that we are we're here, whether it's convenient or not convenient. <laughs> I believe Paul was telling Timothy, he said, he said, preach the word in season and out, of, and out of season. So sometimes you may not feel like it, but you have an assignment to fulfill and you must show up. Somebody say amen. Listen. Just being there is a blessing to others. Not least of all your pastor. Just showing up doesn't necessarily mean you are growing up, but it is a very good indicator. There is something special and powerful about knowing that you are going to be able to see, to sit with, to sing with, to serve with, and to respond to the sermon with your church family week in and week out. We must always keep in mind that our attendance at church is not just about what we get out of it, but our church attendance is also for the glory of God and the good of others. It's not about just what I get out of it. But when I show up, somebody else is encouraged. 
They might be, you know, going through one area of life, seeing you will bring, will spark something on the inside of them. Somebody say amen. Let's read Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. The Bible says, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Most times, believers don't consider other folks. It's about their own issue. It's about their own problem. When you come to church, you look beyond your own issue. Huh? That's the way the Bible puts it. Let's read it again. And let us consider one another to stir up love and good works. Look at verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as it's the manner of some, but exalting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So when you show up, somebody else sees you, they are encouraged. Huh? You are stirring up something on the inside of them. Whatever is already weak receives a boost from the Lord. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Let's rise up. My time is up. PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Let's read this together. We'll take the, the rest next week. The PowerPoint here is, if every church member was just as faithful in attendance as you are, what kind of church would we have? If all of us would decide that every Sunday I'm going to show up, not just show up, I will bring somebody with me. God didn't give us this big old space just for a few of us. No, that's not his intention. And you know, sometimes God will, will bring words like this so that we can adjust because God does not waste resources. You don't want God to boot us out of this place, do you? And I believe that's the reason he's sending this word. He wants us to go to the highways and the byways and beckon on people to come. He gave us this place for his reason. God does not waste his resources. Remember after feeding 5,000 and more, he said they should gather the, the remnant. God does not waste the resources. Are you still here? Let's do the PowerPoint again. One, two, go. If every church member was just as faithful in attendance as you are, what kind of church would we have? Do you find or make excuses not to attend worship? Bible study, small group, or is church attendance a top priority for you and your, and your family? If you don't pick anything, know that you showing up does something. You showing up is stealing up faith in the heart of someone. You showing up, you are fulfilling God's purpose. And God intended desire for mankind. So don't say, oh, if I don't show up, they won't miss me. No. We will miss you and God is also missing you. I understand those who are joining us virtually. But make sure that you are not, it's not the same. Huh? Eh? I believe my wife gave this story during COVID. You know, people were celebrating birthdays on, 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 on Zoom, virtually. And then when it's time to eat, that's when you know that it's not the same. And then some of them are even, I, I call it insensitive. They will show you the array. They will show you the, the food... <laughs> They all, you know, the chicken, the turkey, the assorted meat, and you're just looking at it virtually. Come on. I just tell folks, please, I'm out of this place. 
and they still expect you to send them a gift. I said that to say this, it's not the same. It's not the same. God did intend it that way. All right? God wants us to come together. There is an anointing that is released. Eh? There is a power that is released. The Bible says when they were in one accord, the Holy Ghost came. Glory to God, somebody. So live here today, knowing that to be a pillar in the house of God, you must intentionally make it a priority to show up. Not just Sunday alone. Even our church in the neighborhood on Zoom, make sure that you're a part of it. Our good morning Holy Spirit at 5.30 a.m. in the morning. What are you doing? Early to rise. Huh? Rise up with the Lord. The whole intention is for you to get up and start your day with the Holy Ghost. And that's one of the secrets of the church in Korea. They said even before they went to work, they all gathered in the morning in the sanctuary to pray. And there was a great revival in South Korea. Here, we are not asking you to come to church early in the morning. We're asking you to join by the way of telephone, but you can, some of you still don't join. To be a pillar in the house of God, you must make a choice to participate. I pray you will not be a spectator. You will participate. Lift up your hands to him this morning, or this afternoon rather. Lord, we receive grace in the place of prayer to be pillars in your house. Ah, help us, oh God. Help us to be pillars in your house. Come on, come on, come on. Talk to God. Just whisper it to him. If there are things that are hindering you, talk to God this morning. Lord, move those things out of the way. Some of you, it may be you, you are overindulging yourself. You, you are indulging in things that are not adding any value to your life. Some of you, you are awake till maybe 1 a.m. just watching things that don't have value. Ask God this morning, Lord, remove those things from my life. Lord, grant me the grace, oh God, to always be in your presence. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. We were to do reflection, but I think it, it was part of it, so we'll just flow.